Hi, we have a bit of a precarious balancing tripod today, so hopefully it doesn't fall over. Hopefully it's not shaky. I'm trusting in my fancy koala mattress to keep us safe. But anyway, today is Halloween, the final day in October, and I'm here with an October book haul. I have a ridiculous amount of books to show you today. I'm just gonna go through them as fast as possible. Uh, yeah, there's already like some in shot, so let's get started. Um, with these, I guess. This is in no particular order. This is in the order of near me. So first off, we have Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This is a Okagawa, I think would be the pronunciation. Um, this is a Japanese-inspired kitsune myth um, assassin story, from what I can tell. That's about all I know. Um, I just heard vague things about this and I was so inspired I thought it sounded so amazing that I just had to pick it up I do have some other Julie Kagawa stuff here I have um Talon somewhere on my shelf up here which is one of her other books that's like dragons that have human forms um I'm excited to read that too but it's just been like keeps on being bumped down my TBR but I am determined to get to this sooner rather than later and hopefully that will inspire me to also pick up Talon. And like book two and three and four and five in that series. <laughs> Shadow of the Fox. Mm -hmm. Then we have Two Dark Rains by Kendra Blake. This is the third and not final book in the Three Dark Crowns series. Uh, I believe it's gonna be four books. Um, I'm very excited for this. This is like a dark fantasy, um, it's a little bit urban, but it reads more high fantasy, kind of. Um, and it follows three sisters, triplets, who are destined to fight to get their crown. It's really awesome. I really enjoy it. I've enjoyed the first two in the series, anyway, and the novellas. Um, so I'm very excited to, to pick up book three. Then we have What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. This is a contemporary, which is kind of rare for me, but we're rolling with it. Um about uh, two boys who are trying to fall in love but things keep getting in the way. Um, I'm really excited to read this. I really like Becky Albertalli's things. I've watched Love, Simon and I've read The Upside of Unrequited and Simon vs. The Homo Sapiens Agenda is on my TBR. I just haven't read it yet. Um, and I've heard Adam Silvera is really good and I'd definitely be interested in picking up his things. So I got this. Plus, this would be exactly the kind of fan fiction I would have written back in my fan fiction days. So that kind of spoke to me as well. We also have A Map of Days by Ransom Riggs, which is the fourth book in the Miss Peregrine series. I also, when I got this, got a free copy of Tales of the Peculiar, which is the new edition of Tales of the Peculiar. I have the old green edition in paperback, which I paid for. This came free, but it had one extra story in it. Um, and so I wasn't complaining. This is going on my shelf. But anyway, back to the book at hand. This is book four in Miss Peregrine's. Um, and obviously if you didn't know, Miss Peregrine's, the Miss Peregrine series is a kind of spooky ghostish story. Um, and it's filled with all these photographs. I'm trying to find one here. There's a photograph there. And the photographs kind of help tell the story. This is the first one using colour photographs, which is really exciting. And I'm really keen to give this a try. This is like an addition to the series too. It was originally a trilogy and now this is going to be a second trilogy in the series, I believe. Um, but it does follow the same characters, if you were curious. Uh, we have Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. This is a apocalyptic novel following the concept of um, like a global drought and the tap stop running. Um, originally I was not that interested in this and then I was hearing everyone talk about it and I was like, oh, I don't care, like, it's not my thing. And everyone just kept talking about it and talking about it and talking about it and then the more people were talking about it, the more it wouldn't leave my head. And then I found it at the bookstore and was like, oh, okay, never mind, that's coming home with me. Uh, I did talk about this in a vlog recently. I think it was the only vlog I've had up recently, um, which was my uh, Charms... Charms extra credit vlog. So if you want to hear more about my experience purchasing this, which was not that much extra, but you know, 
uh, you can check that out. Then to a book that just came out today, we have Three Secret Cities by, actually it came out yesterday, sorry, we have The Three Secret Cities by Matthew Riley. This is book five in the Jack West series. This was another series that was originally a trilogy and then got expanded. Um, these are like action thrillers. I call them like action adventure novels because they remind me of like Indiana Jones, especially this series because Jack West is kind of like an Indiana Jones character. Um, this was originally a series and then there was a bridging book and then the, uh, this was a trilogy and then there was a bridging book which was the fourth book and then there's going to be another trilogy, so five, six, seven. Um, and I'm really excited to read this. I loved the original trilogy. I thought book four was good, but it wasn't my favorite, but I definitely could see how it was building up and providing the basis for the next trilogy. And so I'm very excited to see how this goes. Matthew Riley is one of my favorite writers. I've been reading him since I was a kid. I've read all his books. Um, he's kind of an auto buyer for me. My mom loves him, I love him. Um, if my mom hasn't already bought this, I will read it and pass it on to her. So if you're watching this, mom, you don't need to buy this. I'll bring it to you for Christmas if you're happy to wait, but you can just buy it if you want. Um, and it is, I'm, I'm just so excited to read this. I'm definitely going to be reading this in November because I don't know how I can wait. And I know his books just fly by. He doesn't write chapters or anything. He writes scenes like a movie and it's just amazing. So I'm very excited for this. Then the other book on this haul, in this haul that came out yesterday is Wonder Smith, The Calling of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the sequel to Nevermore and The Trials of Morrigan Crow. Um, this is a middle grade book that honestly is like, everyone says this, but it's true. It's like the first book that actually gives true Harry Potter vibes without being anything like Harry Potter. Uh, it's just got that same young kid, um, finding their way in this magical world that they were unfamiliar with and suddenly get stumbled into and so there's some kind of magic and wonder um definitely i really enjoyed the first one i read it earlier this year and i'm definitely keen to pick this up very soon definitely going to be following this series it's a good one another recent release actually most of these books are new releases or almost new releases but <laughs> Um, the next one we're talking about today is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. Yeah, this beast, I bought it. Um, I'm not, I'm so torn because this is the final book in the series. Um, so like the, so this is technically the seventh, isn't it? So if you count, it's like the sixth book and then Tower of Dawn fits in. So it was kind of the sixth book and this is the seventh. Then there was the prequel. So like there's eight books in this series and I've read the other seven. So I feel obliged to read this and I really want to know how it ends. But also I will probably never read another Sarah J Mass book after this in my life. Probably. Um, so I'm a bit torn. Plus it's huge. It's like a thousand pages. I'm going to try and read this in November. I think I just need to read it and get it out of the way. But I have very mixed feelings already and I haven't even read it. I'm a bit scared. So hopefully I like it. Hopefully because it's the end of the series, she does a good job of like making everything come together and really raising the stakes. But I didn't really like the third Court of Thorns and Roses book. I thought that was just a lot of wasted space. It was a long book when it didn't need to be. And when this is like twice the size of that book, I'm concerned. So, yeah, I have reservations, but I'm going to read it. It's, it's in my hands, so I'm going to read it. It's probably actually going to be the next book I read. <laughs> then we have The Hazel Wood by Melissa Albert. I really wanted to pick this up when it first came out, but I didn't because I'd heard a few people saying they really weren't enjoying it. They didn't like the main character. This is a mysterious uh, fairy tale kind of story, and a lot of people were saying they weren't enjoying it. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll just stay clear. But then I heard, um, Sam from Thoughts on Tomes talking about this and she was talking about how, um, the reason she thinks people weren't enjoying it was because of their expectations and they were going in expecting fairy tale tropes and that this kind of subverts most fairy tale tropes and doesn't give you the kind of fairy tale 
and doesn't doesn't follow the fairy tale narrative the way you expect and that might have put people off and also that the character is intentionally very unlikable so that may have put people off um and sh she absolutely adored this so and thought it was a really solid read so that then drew me to picking it up again because i did initially really like the premise so um i am hesitant about this i definitely want to read it i'm still very intrigued but i'm concerned that i won't like it um just because i've definitely heard people say they don't like it but hopefully it surprises me i do tend to be very forgiving um i don't i'm pretty generous in my ratings and i'm pretty generous in my enjoyment of things um so this hopefully i like it we also have the boneless mercies by april genevieve to tolke to tolke um this is a beowulf retelling with a full cast of ladies um i've heard great things about this this is a gorgeous cover gorgeous um and yes i've heard some amazing things about this so i'm definitely keen to give it a try um and it's about women who have to go around killing people mercifully um that's their job because men won't do it and i just oh everything about this speaks to me on that right level i was uh, as with hazelwood actually i was hoping to read this in october for the spooky season but i just ran out of time i did read a lot of spooky books in october but these just didn't quite get read um but i'm definitely going to read them soon because i'm not going to wait till next year for them i'm going to be reading them this year i'm i'm determined <laughs> so yes very excited to read this on the topic of spooky books, and this one I have read in October, but I'll try to keep my wrap-up thoughts out of it. We have Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is a thriller, mystery, spoopy blend. Um, it's a bit complicated to explain, but this is a gorgeous cover. Like, this is so compelling, this cover. Um, and Claire Legrand wrote Furyborn, which I enjoyed but didn't love. Um, so I was definitely keen to give this a try because I thought it sounded very different and very interesting. So this follows three women, like three young girls, who one of them has just moved to this deserted island known as Sawkill Rock. Um, one of them's lived there for a while and her dad is the police chief. And the other one has lived there her whole life and she is kind of like indentured to this devil thing. And you know that right from the start. Um, this was really, no, this is not a wrap up. I'm not telling you my opinions, but anyway, I read this. I'll talk about it more in my wrap up. Then we have The Sisters of the Winter Wood by Rena Rossner. I bought this and Sawkill Girls, actually. I bought both of these while I was in Canada. Um, I bought them just into October, so I didn't include them in my whole last time, even though I did technically have them when I filmed my whole last time. But I am. Um, a little bit over organized so i couldn't justify in my head putting them on my september one in my september wrap uh september haul so this is a uh a very fairy taley retelling of the goblin market um following these two sisters one who can turn into a bear and one who can turn into a swan uh this i've also already read and i'll talk about in my wrap up but this cover is gorgeous like look at that it's beautiful and it has deckled edges um oh the underside is not that pretty but it's got that gold writing like oh yes um and this is told half in verse half in prose one sister's point of view is told in verse and one sister's point of view is told in prose so if you want to hear my thoughts on this one also check out my wrap up which should be coming soon then we have and the ocean was our sky by patrick ness illustrated by ravina kai this is a picture story chapter book aimed definitely not at children <laughs> it's a retelling of moby dick from the whale's perspective uh the art in this is beautiful i'll talk about this more in my wrap up again because i've also already read it but uh, I was very keen to give this a try. I have not read a full novel by Patrick Ness, but I've read A Monster Calls before this and this, and I'm definitely keen to check out more of his work. But uh, seeing as this can just be read so fast, I read it so fast, and then it can go on my shelf 
and be beautiful. I couldn't resist. We have The Heart Forger by Rin Chupayko. This is the sequel to The Bone Witch, which I read a couple of months ago. And I've just been meaning to pick this up because if you didn't know, I tend to... Uh, my new buying habits for series is to buy a book. Um, when I finish it, I can buy the next one. So I was due to pick up the sequel to The Bone Witch. Um, and this is a hardback, quite fancy, fancy, fancy. Um, the third one of these, which I can't remember its full name, like I can't remember the actual title, that comes out very soon or has just come out. So I'm very excited to read this probably in the new year uh, and then move on to the next one. Uh, this is like a Asian inspired, well I mean our author is Filipino um, and it has some geisha elements and things. The first one was very much a memoirs of a geisha retelling in a fantasy setting. And I'm interested to see where that goes in this second book and what it expands on or what influence it, influences it uses. So I'm definitely keen to try this. The inevitable book in this haul is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Again, I've already read this. Uh, this is the sequel to Strange the Dreamer um, and completes the duology. And this is a lyrical, beautiful fantasy series that just is mind-blowing, heartbreaking, beautiful. I'll talk about it more in my wrap-up, obviously. But yes, it's beautiful. I'm so excited to have this sitting on my shelf next to Strange the Dreamer. I'm so happy. And the last book for this book haul, it's a bit anticlimactic, but I didn't want to build up to anything, really. Um, and I'm so excited for this. Like, for me, this is still a climax. This is the Phoenix Empress by K. Arsena Rivera. This is the sequel to The Tiger's Daughter, which I read earlier in the year. Um, and this is a Mongolian inspired, though I believe some of the Asian rep is a bit questionable. I've heard some own voice, no. I've heard about some own voices reviews that were a little negative, um, but this is a sapphic story with warrior women loving each other and I just really enjoyed the first one and I was very excited to pick up the sequel which just dropped last month or this month in October. Um, I'm very keen to read this. This will probably happen very soon and I'm so excited for the new elements that are going to be in this one. I can't wait. I don't even know how to hold all these up. Let's, I'm seated too which doesn't help so let's, let's try and pile these. <laughs> <sighs> that's them. That's all the books I've read this month. Those are all the books I bought in the month of October. There's so many. Oh, oh my god. Let's clear. Get some of them off me. Oh my god. So many books. So many books I bought this month. Um, but most of them are new releases. Um, and I'm so excited about all of them. And I've already read a lot of them. And I'm just oh, so good. I had such a good reading month, which I'll be talking about in my wrap up, and I just so many good books came out in October and September and November. Like, so many. So many. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching this amazingly long haul. I will see you soon with my October wrap up, which should be dropping any day. I just, I'm currently in the middle of a book, and it's October 31st. And I'm hopeful to have it finished by the end of the night. So I don't want to film it when I'm still reading. So that will probably get filmed in the next couple of days. Anyway, keep an eye out for that. And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!